welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. I'm Priscilla. I'm the owner of A Life Full Simplicity. Today I'll be flipping through the Fifth Spirit Tarot by Charlie Claire Burgess. This is a 78 card deck and guidebook. Now, the reason why I'm going to be flipping through this is because I got this last year. So I had pre-ordered this last year, got it in December, came out in December, got it. And I started using it right away. It was during the holidays that I got it. So I got it on, the, I think, on like the 20, came out on the 20th, I think. And I think I got it like a day after that. And I started using it right away. And I absolutely love this deck. It's absolutely amazing. It was previously indie. Hay House picked it up mass market. So this is published by Hay House. Uh, again, Hay House did not send me this. I actually purchased this myself last year. And the reason I'm flipping through this now is because Charlie actually just came out with a book called Radical Tarot, Queer the Cars, Liberate Your Practice and Create the Future. Now, this book here is uh, published by Hay House. Hay House did send me this book for the purposes of review, and I'm excited to go through it and show you uh, the table of contents. I actually started reading it. I haven't gotten too far, though. I only got to page, uh, I'm on page nine currently, so I haven't gotten too far in the book, but so far I'm really, really enjoying um, what I've read up until now, which isn't that much because... I've only read like nine pages, but still really enjoying it so far. And I'm excited when I get into the actual cards. So there are, oh, I hit my camera, sorry. There are entries for the actual cards. So I was thinking uh, once I pick, pull a card to read, we can read from the, um, uh, this bigger book as well to see uh, what uh, Charlie has to say about the card in their bigger book called Radical Tarot. Now, if you want to check out the book or this deck, I will have links down below in the description box for you to check out. Of course, there will be also in the description box some timestamps if you would like to just solely check out the book and not the deck. Maybe you have the deck already and you've had it for a while and just want to check out the book. You can do so. There will be timestamps uh, that you can click on to jump around. I also did want to say that uh, Charlie actually has a free gift that you can get if you purchase the book over on their website. And I will leave that also linked down below. So if you purchase their book, um, you just need the order number and you can go on to their website and fill in the information, uh, submit it, and then you'll get an email uh, with a link to an ebook that has 22 spreads in it, one for each major arcana card. So that's pretty cool. I actually reached out to Charlie and uh, asked if I could still get it, even though I received the book for review from Hay House, and they were nice enough to um, allow me uh, an option to receive the ebook. Now, I'm not going to show it, obviously, on the channel because I do want uh, people to be surprised when they receive that free gift. So, yes, but I did want to mention it. It's really cool. There's a spread for each major Arcana card. And I've been really enjoying the spreads. They're really nice. So definitely check it out if you're interested. Uh, definitely check out the book. So we're going to go ahead and get into the deck first. And then we'll look at pairings with the deck. Because I have two particular Oracle decks that I love pairing with this particular deck. And then we'll get into uh, the Radical Tarot uh, book. I'll show you the table of contents. Uh, there's no, there's no that many pictures or anything. There are some black and white images of the major cards, I think. Uh, like some small, yeah, just some small black and white photos. But other than that, there's not really any images, especially not for the, the minors or anything. So I, there's not really much to to show in terms of like the content of the book though I'll show you the information that I read for whatever card that we pull but for sure I'll be showing the um, table of contents that way you can see what exactly you can expect uh, within the book itself 
So yes, let's get into the deck. I'm really excited. I did put the deck back in order so you can see it, how it would be if you bought the deck itself. So this is the sides. Now in the back here, it says Tarot Beyond Binaries. The tarot thrives in liminality and nuance. The more we work with the tarot, the more we realize that everything is fluid. Gender, meaning, even time. We are all creatures of earth, air, fire, and water, bound together by the fifth element, spirit. This deck expands notions of gender through the juxtaposition of traditional titles and queered imagery. It encourage, encourages you to queer your practice by listening to your intuition, your personal uh, symbolism, and your own lived wisdom. Now that's queer. And then we have some uh, sample images here in the back of some of the cards. This retails for $28.99 in the US, $38.99 Canadian. Uh, how much did I pay for this? I pre-ordered this, so I got a pre-order price. Let me, let me take a look, actually, because I don't remember how much I spent. Um, on this particular deck. Let's see, your orders. <sighs> yeah, so I ordered this last July. And... The view order details. Does it say? Does it say when I received this? Oh, I received it on December 22nd. Okay, that's cool. So I got on the 22nd of December. I ordered it in July. I paid $37.23 for it with the tax no before tax but i had a ten dollar gift card on amazon so i actually only paid 32.81 for it so that's cool still less than the retail value um does it say what i pre-ordered at at i think 37 i pre-ordered at 37 something 23 and it retails for 38.99 Well, because I had a gift card, I saved like five bucks or something. So not, not too bad in my opinion. Um, cause I only spent with the tax 3281. Um, the tax is what always gets you in my opinion. So yeah, especially where I live. Okay, so let's get into it now that I've read the back. So on the inside here, we have, May this deck guide you to your truth. For where you find your truth, you'll find your power. And then on the bottom, it says, A queer and inclusive deck for the world beyond binaries. I really love that. So, of course, uh, this was previously indie, but um, the box is different from the indie version, of course. And then I think the backs are different as well. I know that Charlie uh, changed some of the... Um, I think a few of the cards, uh, they changed a few of the cards and the imagery on the cards. And I know that they also um, edited some of the cards that were from the indie version to be like more fuller, like the full length of the card or whatever. Uh, if I'm remembering correctly from last year, it, it's been a long while. So I'm trying to remember what exactly they stated on their Instagram. But yes, if you have the indie version, you'll see the differences. But yeah, so this is the guidebook that it comes with. If it'll focus, there we go. So we have a dedication here. 
we have the table of contents so we have like an introduction a note on gender and inclusivity reversals querying your tarot practice tarot spreads uh, we have the cards we have major arcana minor arcana the suits acknowledgements and about the creator so we have an introduction here we have a note on gender and inclusivity um so instead of renaming the cards i sought to challenge the gender binary and expand notions of gender through the juxtaposition of traditional titles and queered imagery um so the empress can have long cascading hair and a flat hairy chest uh, the empress uh, sorry the emperor can wear flowy clothes grow a beard and have breasts uh, non-binary femme can be king a cisgender man can be queen and anyone can defy and expand ecstatically um ecstatically embody any gender that they wish and i love that about this particular deck because i just i love it i love the the cards and everything about them then we have some uh, some uh, information on reversals. <clears throat> I don't believe there are reversals in here. I'm trying to remember. No, I don't think so. Um, you can really do whatever you want when it comes to reversals, in my opinion. Use them. Don't do them. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. And then we have some information on queering your tarot uh, practice, queer your language, uh, scrap the masculine feminine duality, uh, think beyond binary, forget the shoulds, don't assume, and throw out the guidebook. <laughs> yeah, do whatever you want, really, honestly. And then we have some tarot spreads. So we have beyond binary spread. We have everyone's a little queer spread, uh, five spirits spread, and that's it. And then it goes into the cards. So we have some information here about the major arcana, the minor arcana, the suits. And then it goes into the major arcana. So all we have is like a blurb for everything. Um... That's really it. There's no keywords or anything. It's just a blurb. So we'll definitely read from the guidebook uh, later when we pull cards. We have some acknowledgments. And then about the uh, creator. So, yes. So let's get into the cards. I'm just going to move. I'm just going to trade. There we go. Okay, move the guidebook over. Okay, so let's get into cards. So the first one is the Fool. Here are the backs. The backs are fully reversible if you'd like to use reversals. So that's fine. Right, just to show you. Uh, no differences in my opinion. I do love this fool very much. They're holding a flower. I don't know if you can tell because it's like white, but there we go. This is the magician. So we do have all the tools available. You can see wands, cups, pentacles, swords. We have an Ouroboros uh, symbol there. I think this is rose. We have some elemental symbols, which is cool. I love this Empress card. One of the faves, one of my faves.
Then we have the Empress. I love the Empress and Emperor in these cards. Very nice. There's the Emperor. The Hierophant. I love this Hierophant because it's not super... It's not like the traditional Hierophant where we have like... You know, the very popey vibes, very religious vibes. And I really like that about this. You still get like that teacher vibe and like a mentor, which the Hierophant typically is. So I, I do like that they kept that aspect um, with this Hierophant. And they have the keys. They have the elemental position of the Hierophant as well. They're in a library. That's what it looks like anyway. Then we have the Lovers. I love this Lovers card. Very powerful. It's more, uh, it takes more of a self-love aspect, uh, in my opinion. The Chariot. With the uh, roller skates. And we have strength. Person with their dog. Love it. Love this hermit card. They're out in nature. Exploring. You know, exploring solitude in, uh, in wilderness. Which I really love. Uh, this Wheel of Fortune is fantastic. We have, like, the different elements, um, kind of, like, seasons as well, or, like, aspects of, like, uh, night, day, we have some rain in there. We have some wind, technically, with the grass blowing. I really like it. It's beautiful. We still have the traditional aspects on the wheel themselves. Um, this one has all the zodiac signs around it. Really cool. Then we have the Justice. House of Law. They have the sword with the um scale now the scale is not balanced as you can see the 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 part of the scale with the feather is a little bit higher than the one with the heart very um hot vibes with the with the scale with the heart and the feather we have the hanged one They're like underwater. It's really cool. Then we have the aspects of death. I love this because it's very cyclical. So you have like birth and like it goes up until, you know, someone who is elderly until like death. Then you have some, you have butterflies, you have the aspect of the snake. This death card is like everything. It's beautiful. Temperance. We have the devil. The tower. Star. Love the star card.
all these cards are super empowering and I love them very much. We have the moon, the sun. The sun is actually representative of the creator themselves. So that's the creator. That's their partner. Super great. I love that they that they drew themselves uh, into the into the deck. It adds a nice touch, in my opinion. Then we have judgment. And the world. So that's it for the the major arcana. Then we have the Ace of Wands. So obviously the wands are the fire suit. So we have like a lot of fire aspects within the wands. You know, match, candle, hot air balloons. <laughs> stove and lanterns now of course some of the cards are a little pippish but I feel like you can still get the gist of the card from what's going on in the imagery in my opinion that's something uh, that I really like about it like it's minimal but it's not minimal in the way that it's just depicting you know five cups and then that's it and there's nothing else to it There's a lot going on, in my opinion, in these cards. The Nine of Wands. The Ten of Wands. We have the Page. The knight. We have the queen. Who's a queen? Love it. Nine lives ballroom. We have the king. And then we go into the cups. I love all the aces in the stack. They're absolutely amazing. And the two cups, a lot of duality. Uh, what are the bugs in this? I think they're ladybugs, yeah. Little ladybugs. We have the three. We have the four. Five of Cups. Six of Cups. Seven of Cups. <laughs> this one has a spider under it. A lot going on. There's another spider over here. We have the Eight of Cups. All these um, pots and jars and bowls all collecting water that is leaking from the roof. <laughs> the Nine of Cups. We have the Ten of Cups. Page. Night. We have the Queen. The King. Then we go into the Swords. I really like the diversity in this deck as well. 
Uh, there's a lot of diversity, body diversity, gender diversity, people diversity. Um, diversity in in the sense of like disabilities, uh, which is great as well. You don't see enough of that, in my opinion, in, in decks a lot of the time. So I like that this deck um, tries to do a lot of different things. I don't remember if there was age diversity, though. Um... King of Swords. Oh, sorry. Queen of Swords. And then King of Swords. <laughs> I didn't order those two properly. And then we can go into the last suit, which is the Pentacles. I love this. So beautiful. Six of Pentacles. I love that the Six of Pentacles is in the aspect of donations. Like in the aspect of like charities. I love this. Eight of Pentacles. All the tools that you need to master your skills. Nine of Pentacles is a feast, which is nice. Being very abundant. Ten of Pentacles. Being a house is very nice because, you know, Ten of Pentacles is also about all, all about, like, legacy and, like, the, the success and wealth that you pass on through generations. And a lot of the time, just owning a house to pass on to, to your family is, like, the biggest thing. Because so many people can't do that. You have the knight. This knight has a prosthetic leg, which is awesome. Queen of Pentacles and King of Pentacles. Yeah, I absolutely love this deck so much. It's definitely one of my top favorites. Um when it comes to like diverse modern decks this is definitely one of my favorites uh standard tarotish yeah i would say so maybe a little smidge taller same same with just a little smidge taller like a small little like there's barely a difference in my opinion uh <laughs> <laughs> it's like a little smidge taller. Uh, it shuffles really well. The cardstock is definitely different. I was surprised. I don't think I have any decks from Hay House that feel like this specifically, but I really like the feeling of it. It's, in my opinion, very nice. Um... But yeah, I really, okay, I guess I'm reading that one. Monster. What's that? Okay, we have the Knight of Wands. Um, I like the sound that it makes.
yeah i love the sound that this deck makes uh when you shuffle it it's so nice um i would love if hay house put this out as a pocket deck honestly i think it would do really well as a pocket edition uh we have another wands card okay here's the ten of cups i want a major card major arcana uh where are all the major arcanas okay here strength <laughs> uh so we can read some cards read some cards okay okay Oh, actually, I pulled the Knight of Wands first. Drank last. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read from the guidebook first, and then I'm going to read from this bigger book. And then we, when we look at the bigger book, I'll show you the entries, because the major card has, like, several pages. Let me see here. Strength. Um, okay, so strength has one, two, three, four, five, six pages to read. And then the Ten of Cups and Knight of Cups only have like a paragraph of uh or maybe two, two, three paragraphs to read, which is not as bad. So yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. Okay, so let's look at the Knight of Wands in the guidebook that comes with it. Okay, where is Knight of Wands? Here we go. Knight of Wands. Okay, Knight of Wands. The Knight of Wands is, for lack of a better word, a badass. There are fearless, they are fearless, eager, and unafraid to face plant in the pursuit of a new trick. Fabulous, bold, and loud, they turn heads and don't mind the stares because if someone doesn't approve, well, screw the haters. This knight is foolish and glorious in the pursuit of their dreams, taking risks and making moves, always creative and always active, always running after their next big thing. In readings, they encourage you to be bold in pursuit of your passions and to take action with energy and verve. They don't care how improbable the dream is. They encourage you to go for it anyway. Blazing with confidence that you'll succeed, but ready to take knocks on the chin if you don't. Passion is the most important thing the knight knows. Chase the passion wherever it leads and do it with style. Okay, so that's what I read for the Knight of Wands. So this and then this. Okay. Then we move to the Ten of Cups. Okay, the Ten of Cups. In the Ten of Cups, we've returned to the endlessly flowing well of the Ace. When this card appears, you may feel the joy of a uh, reciprocated love from your friends and chosen family. These bonds don't have to follow any blueprint because love looks like whatever it looks like to you. This happiness may also be entirely within yourself, marking an achievement in your emotional journey of self-love or healing, or it may arise in conjunction with a project, role, or experience that fills you, that fills you with joy of having a gratifying purpose. Whatever the case, this is the culmination of an emotional journey. This is true happiness and contentment, which comes not from the external trappings of life, 
but from internal harmony and the ever-flowing renewal of love. With this card, you found a contentment that comes from being your authentic self, following your authentic dreams, and living an existence that is meaningful to you by your own standards. You are fulfilled. Love has many hues, and here is the full spectrum. So this is what I read for the Ten of Cups. And this on the top. And then lastly, strength. Okay. Strength. The strength of the strength card is not bulging muscles and brute force, nor is it impervious defenses and iron uh, commands. This strength is something else entirely. The strength to be vulnerable. When this card appears, find the courage to face what scares you and do it with an open heart. This strength might manifest as sitting with uncomfortable emotions and painful truths or opening your heart to that of which might hurt you and trusting that it won't. This strength uses gentleness rather than force, compassion instead of control, love in the face of hate. Strength says to be strong but soft, be gentle but don't give up. And when the night is darkest, take comfort in the blazing boldness of your vulnerable heart, for true strength is the courage to meet your fears without weapons, with the radical compassion of unguarded flesh, and the tender resolve of a, a scarred heart. Courage isn't the absence of the fear, but the strength to not be controlled by it. So I read this and this. Okay, now I want to read from the bigger book um, because there's way more to read uh, from the Radical Tarot. Okay, so we're going to start with the Knight of Wands. So let me go to the Knights. So for the court card specifically, the way it's structured is that the court cards are all together. So you have uh, all the pages together, all the Knights together, all the Queens together, and all the Kings together. And it tells you specifically um, what it is, like if it's from the Wands, Cups, Swords, and all that good stuff. Okay, Knight of Wands, Seeker of Fire, the Vanguard. The Vanguard is on the forefront of change, and that's exactly where the Knight of Wands wants to be. They are, in a, uh, they are an innovator and a trailblazer with a performer's energy, grabbing attention and setting fires of inspiration wherever they go. They are the kind of person who is ho uh, holy and loudly themselves, and they don't care what anyone thinks about it. They only have eyes for their purpose. The seeker of fire takes bold and creative action in pursuit of their passions, giving them a definite performance art meets frontline protest vibe. They know what they want and where they're going, and they're not afraid of making some trouble to get there. Each knight or seeker speaks to a particular pacing and style of movement. The Knight of Wands says to move quickly, confi confidently, and boldly, and do it with style. Don't be afraid to take some risks and ruffle some feathers because you've got the fire inspiration on your side. I'll show you the entries um, afterwards when we move to the book. That way you can see them properly. 
because uh, in this angle it's harder to see. Then we'll move to the cups. So the actual suits uh, are all together. So you have all the wands together, all the cups together, all the swords together, all the pentacles together, and so on and so forth. So... Okay. Ten of Cups. In the Ten of Cups, we arrive at the completion of our emotional journey. This is the moment when we know what it means to be truly happy. If you've been following along through the Cups suit, you know that true happiness is knowing that happiness is not a constant. The Ten of Cups is frequently chalked up to be happy endings. Uh, up, chalked up to happy endings. It's the credits at the end of the rom-com snapshots of the seemingly picture-perfect wedding scrolling down the screen, but it's not reality, and it's not the end. After our happy milestones, life still rolls on. We can't stay in euphoria forever like a fly trapped in amber. That's not living. The joy of the Ten of Cups is not externally sourced, not based in objects and achievements. Rather, it's rooted in a sense of internal stability and satisfaction that arises from being true to our authentic selves. This is a self-love and self-knowledge, not as a spa day or a mindfulness retreat, but as an integrated and lived reality. The Ten of Cups happens when we love ourselves enough to be compassionate and accountable when we trust ourselves enough to know we'll figure uh, life out even when it's hard and when we feel our happy happiness enough to let it guide our choices. This card is often depicted with a rainbow, which can take as a nod to the queerness and diversity of love. The rainbow can also represent all the colors of our emotions and the spectrum of life's experiences, love and grief, joy and despair, anger and amusement, all of them are caught up in that rainbow. So perhaps the Ten of Cups is not just about the happiness end of that spectrum, but about embracing the sheer vivid experience of the whole thing. The secret of the cups is in learning to move and dance and rejoice through it all. Rain or shine, storm or rainbow. Beautiful. I actually really love that so much. Wow. So much depth, honestly. Okay, so then we're going to move on to strength. Uh, strength. Here we go. Okay, so strength is going to be really long. It's six pages, so bear with me. Strength. Beastly entangled with life. Alternative names. Nature. The wild thing. The heart's creature. Domains. Courage. Facing fear. Perseverance. Self-compassion. Powerful feelings. The beastly self. The more than human world. Strength. Way more accessible a title than some of the other cards in this deck, am I right? Classically depicted as a femme person standing over a lion and placing their hands gently on its uh, maw, the card seems to offer a version of strength that is notably different from the steely authority of the classic emperor or the competitive ambition of the traditional chariot. This is a strength that comes this is a strength that comes from compassion instead of control, gentleness rather than force, and strength of character over brute strength. In some ways the strength card is exactly as obvious as it seems. Counseling endurance through adversity and courage in the face of fear. In other ways, it becomes more complex, growing hair, teeth, roses, and ri uh, rhizomes that long the longer you look at it. 
Fitting for a card that features a wild animal, the first appearance of wildness yet in the deck. The horses in the chariot, I'd argue, are thoroughly domesticated. In this chapter, we'll follow the shape, getting hairier and wilder and more unruly as we go. Many modern readers interpret strength from a psychoanalytic approach situating the lion as the proverbial beast within that symbolizes our most powerful feelings our demons and or our shadow self the shadow is a term from Jungian psychology that refers to the hidden or repressed parts of our personality the ones we don't like to acknowledge but must be integrated for us to fully self-actualize Uh, I won't be using the term here because many brilliant activists and linguists have noted that using the terms like shadow, dark, and black to describe bad or negative things uh, contributes to racism and implicit bias. Instead, I'll be taking a cue from the strengths card imagery itself and employ the term beastly self Beastly connotates uh, something untamed that prowls the uh, wildest fringes of ourselves. Something with hot breath, long claws, and a beating heart. Something frightening in its unknown unknown ability, uh, but not necessarily bad. Just wild, different, unexamined. uh, Wild, different, unexamined. For our purposes, the beastly self encapsulates Young's shadow and more. All our parts that scare us, our hidden shame and fear, our innermost struggles and desires, and all our deepest feelings that seem too powerful to feel least they rip us apart uh, with their exuberant teeth. In many New Age arenas... These beastly qualities are treated as either good things that one can embrace, such as sexuality or kink, or bad things that one can overcome, like jealousy or vindictiveness. These characteristics are our hidden or repressed selves. Like most things, don't usually fit into such tidy binaries of good and bad. If we look to strengths iconography as a model, the person's lose grip on animal uh the person's loose grip on animal suggests that this is not a matter of overcoming obliterating or even subduing the beast instead it seems more a process of acceptance respect and intentional participation an exchange is happening between the creatures on this card The person does not try to change the lion into something else, does not try to cage the lion or kill it for its strength like Hercules or the warriors of old. Likewise, the lion does not try to devour the person for lunch, such as one might fear from one's uh, one's most hidden parts and powerful emotions. The lion does not even bite. Instead, the two come into contact with um, reciprocity, exchanging a gentle pet, a loving lick. We put so much effort into subduing our emotions that when they finally break loose, they erupt from the pressure. We spend so much time denying the inconvenient parts of our personalities, urges, and secret desires that they fester inside us and turn into hate, which we direct inward at ourselves and outward at those we perceive to be too like our secret selves. We bury our beastly selves in so much shame that we that their unloved bodies uh, pollute the water table. It does not have to be this way. In the Empress chapter, we talked about the immense re- revolutionary power of feeling our feelings. The same is true here. In fact, Uh, Commentators on the RWS deck have noted that the strength person resembles the Empress. But unlike the Empress, whose range 
uh, envelops all feelings, but most especially the pleasureful and empowering ones. Strength brings direct focus onto the feelings that are difficult, scary, ugly. And strength reminds us that we need to feel them too. Strength calls to face the fearsome parts of ourselves with courage and compassion. To become the Sonia Renee Taylor calls fear facing. Our fear facingness is not the absence of fear, says Taylor, but the, uh, but the interrogation of it. Why do we feel afraid? What's scary here? What are we concerned will happen if we look at these parts of ourselves in the eyes? Why do we think we're so beastly? Courage, as long as, as, courage has long been a primary interpretation of the strength card. It has been the name of the card in some decks and examining our most deeply buried parts is certainly courageous. It is damn scary, Taylor writes, to probe the depths of the thoughts, ideas, and subconscious principles governing our daily lives. To be fear-facing is to learn the distinction between fear and danger and assess if we are truly in peril or if we are simply afraid of the unknown. When we stop denying our beastly parts and begin to figure out how to work with them with compassion, wisdom, and respect, we often find there was nothing to be afraid of at all. But to get there, we first must decide to brave the fear and find out. Real strength, however, is not only the strength to face our fears, our feelings, or beastly selves, but the strength to not look away from what we find it is the strength to not abandon ourselves in our most vulnerable beastliness our difference our hurt our shame it is the strength to extend radical self-love to all the parts of ourselves and the strength to extend the fullness of that love to others too uh, many tarot readers including myself have interpreted this card as teaming our beastly selves but I'm not sure um, domicility and uh, domestication are the goal anymore. Is strength a call to untame ourselves, rewild ourselves, and embrace the delicious feral ferocity within? Is strength the strength to tame the beast or the strength to be the beast? Neither and both. Sally Nichols suggests that the title strength refers to two figures together, not one or the other. Seen this way, the strength is not, is not the person's or the lion's alone. It arises from their contact and mingling. It's all about the point of contact where the strength person's hands touch the strength animal's mouth. Strength asks us to open our inner beast jaws when it is good and necessary to roar and bite and uh, uh, gnash some teeth and close them when it is good and necessary to employ restraint and tact and composure. Like the magician, strength uses both hands, but this time the contact is up close and personal, not commanded at a distance through a magic wand or a pointed finger. It is not a magic directed or rather directing energy to their will, but a human being having a direct experience with emotion, with struggle, with desire, with life. Instead of wrestling the beast, the person caresses its jaw, the most dangerous and scary part of it. As anyone who has had the privilege to befriend a dog or cat knows, animals allow you to touch their muzzles, otherwise you're going to get bit. What we witness here is collaboration, mutual respect, coexistence, not control. But we're not done yet. While writing this chapter, it occurred to me, I'm ashamed to say for the first time, that there's something amiss with the uh, dominance of the human in the card. The way they lean over the lion, however gently. The fact that it's classically a lion, the king of the jungle, the apex predator at the top of the food chain, is no doubt meant to suggest the supremacy or evolution of humankind over the animal kin. 
even over nature itself. This is a dangerous mindset to have, seeing as it has led to extractive human rot abuses that have put the planet and climate in such dire jeopardy. It also reveals another false binary operating within dominant Western culture and tarot interpret interpretation alike, man versus nature. As if nature is a monolithic entity instead of a tangled riot of variance and variety. As if humans are separate from nature instead of intimately entwined within its tangle. The man versus nature dualism situates a humankind at the center of everything and the rest of all creation as the other, which must be tamed, fought back, coral, uh, corralled, pinned down, used. This dichotomy also extends to how we properly popularly conceptualize our own psychology and inner workings. Perceiving the mind and intellect as lawfully civilized and supreme and our emotions and instincts as base, wild, and animalistic. Emotions become misleading, weaknesses that must be denied, and our urges, monstrous beasts, we must cage up and control in favor of the cold, hard truth of logic. Sound familiar? This is the logic of toxic masculinity that says boys don't cry. This is the propaganda of patriarchy that snickers that women can't hold positions of power because what if they get their period? If we follow the, this line of thinking a few more disastrous steps down the poison path, it twists back and becomes a political rhetoric of what is natural and unnatural used to justify homophobia, transphobia, racism, misogyny, uh, misogynoir, ableism, uh, anti miscegenate, anti miscegenation, and more. I'm not sure about that word, never seen that word before. Uh, one radical application of strength is to reconsider our very conception of nature, our relationship to it, and our rationality, uh, relational relationality rather within it to consider the nature may not be a top-down thing not a hierarchical uh, taxonomy with humankind at the zenith but something interwoven indefinable and complex if lions are the king of the beasts what of the bacteria that live in the lion's gut what of the fleas and ticks that snack on its blood? We've all heard of the web of life, but philosopher and professor Timothy Morton suggests conceptualizing nature as a mesh, a non-totalizable, open-ended um, concatenation of interrelations that blur and confound boundaries that practicality any level. Practically at at practically any level, rather, um, between species, between the living and the non-living, between organism and environment. Tarot common, uh, commentators have noted that in the Marseille pattern, the lion appears to be fused with or emerging from the person's lower body. In the RWS deck, the person and the lion seem to be wrapped in the same flowered garland entwined as it were human with the beast with the plant with the environment enmeshed perhaps both ideas are present in strength the human um propensity to separate uh dominate extract force and the human enmeshment with the non-human and the more than human the wildness the aliveness of all things However lofty and removed we think ourselves to be, however hard we scrub the dirt from our houses and from under our nails, however horribly we have mistreated the planet and each other and ourselves, strength reminds us that we are not separate from nature, from the wild, from stream or spore or stranger. We are the wilderness too. Oh, wow. That was so good. I hadn't even gotten to this part yet. And that was so good. I loved every bit of what I just read. And apologies, that was really long. I read all six pages. So yes, we're going to switch up the view now. I'm actually going to show the book first so I can show the entries. 
uh, and the table of contents, and then we'll do the uh, pairings uh, that I've been using with this particular deck. So we, before we go into the entries, this is the cover of the book. Very beautiful. Very reminiscent of the art that's shown, to be honest, in my opinion, uh, in the Fifth Spirit deck. Here is the back. So the back reads, Tarot is a tool of responsibility, questioning, exploration, and transformation. Yet too often it is reduced to rigid binary definitions that reinforce restic restrictive norms. In Radical Tarot, Charlie Claire Burgess rec reclaims tarot as a tool that can help us free from free us rather from oppressive paradigms and a power, empower us to direct our own futures through radical reflection, self-discovery, and change. With deep, knowledgeable, and lyrical looks at the cards, Burgess deconstructs the cards' historical meanings, offers queered and updated interpretations, and invites the reader to imagine what else could be possible for the cards, for themselves, and for the world. Queer, expansive, intersectional, and creative, Radical Tarot is more than a guide to tarot. It is a guide to their own personal revolution, informed by queer theory, social, environmental justice, and Burgess's lived experience as a queer and non-binary person whose life was changed radically through tarot. Radical Tarot is for anyone who dreams that better more liberated futures are possible because tarot doesn't tell the future it helps us create it now the book itself retails for 19.99 in the u.s uh 25.99 in canada again the book itself i did receive from hay house for review the deck i bought myself so yes uh this releases on september 26th when you're watching this it's already released so you can definitely check it out and just a reminder there's a link down below for charlie's website as they are giving a free gift that you can get if you buy the book so definitely check it out if you're interested it's an ebook with a, a tarot spread for every major arcana card so there's 22 spreads uh within the ebook I started uh, my own, uh, my own little thing here for note notating and annotating and all that stuff. So here's the table of contents. So there is a forward and introduction. The book itself is split into five parts. So part one is toward a radical tarot. We have three chapters, which includes a radical tarot manifesto. Uh, no ordinary deck, what it is, what it's not, what's in it. And chapter three, no bosses, no binaries, tarot beyond hierarchy and gender. Then we go into part two, which is the major arcana. And you have a chapter for every single card. Then part three is the minor arcana, which you have a chapter for every single suit. And then part four is the court cards, where you have a chapter for every single court card. So the pages the knights the queens and kings and then every single page is within the pages so we have you know the page of wands page of cups uh page of swords and pentacles within this particular chapter and then part five is reading tarot radically so read the cards and create the future we have a conclusion acknowledgments and notes biography or bibliography rather and about the author so I'm going to go ahead and show the entries for the cards that I read. Uh, if you skipped to this part and didn't see that or he listen to that, if you go back to the previous timestamp, I did read uh, these cards uh, from both the guidebook, so the guidebook that comes with the deck, as well as from the book itself. So definitely check that out on the previous timestamp to this one. So for the night, so this is the page. Okay, so for the knights, they start off like this. I have some information and goes straight into each knight card. So for the knight of wands, this is what I read. Hmm. 
this paragraph here. Then for the cups, uh, swords. So for the cups, we have uh, information on the cups itself. Then it goes into every single card, which varies between a paragraph or two to three paragraphs. So one, two, or three paragraphs per card, depending on the card. And then for the Ten of Cups, this is what I read. And then lastly, for the majors, the majors are several pages. So um, there's a lot of information for the majors, uh, majors themselves. Uh, there we go. So for the strength card, this is everything I read. Now, I didn't read the footnotes uh, that are here. So just to let you know. So the strength card is about six pages. I keep hitting my camera, apologies. Like no space. Uh, of course, the imagery that they discuss is not from their deck themselves that they created, but instead they talk a lot about the imagery in the RWS. So if you have the RWS deck, then you can understand the imagery and where it's coming from. So this was the last page I read. So there's a lot of information in this. I have started reading it. I am currently on page nine. And I did stick some notes and things. I've been highlighting some stuff. But yeah, I'm currently on page nine. I'm actually at number three because I've read all that. But I'm on number three currently of the manifesto part which i believe is chapter two. Oh no still in chapter one then this is chapter two so yes i am excited to continue reading this and work with this particular book with the deck itself um i think it's really interesting and I'm really excited to continue on from what I've read here today in this video of the cards because I hadn't gotten there yet. I found it really empowering, really interesting. There was a lot of depth in the entries for the cards that I read and a lot of information that you can gather um, and bring into your own practice within this book. So I'm really, really happy so far with it. Of course, I will give it a final rating and final review once I actually uh, read it uh, fully. So yeah, so that was Radical Tarot, uh, new release uh, from Charlie Claire Burgess and from Hay House. Now let's get into the, the pairings with this particular deck. So the first pairing that I've been using with this deck has been the Modern Nirvana Oracle. Uh, this is by Jennifer Sodini and illustrated by Natalie Miller. And Jennifer Sodini partnered with Kat Graham, Frank uh, Larridi, Alarity and Bryant Wood uh, to create this deck here. So, yes, I do like using these together. I'm just gonna. Take this out. These pair really well together, and I think it's really because of the borders. Let's focus that. I'm gonna zoom in a bit actually. Yeah, so this is better. I absolutely love these together. They both have like a beige background or like a beige border around them. So they they feel so, um, what do you call it? What's the word? They feel very cohesive together. That's the word I was looking for. Cohesive. And 
and I just love the way they look together. They look amazing. This deck does have sigils in it. I don't have a walkthrough of this on my channel either, this particular deck. Um, oh, I love this. Look at that. Forgiveness in between the lovers and the five of pentacles. That is so perfect. So perfect. But I have used these together in my practice and I've gotten some amazing readings with them. And I love them very much. They look so good. So we have Mask. And then we have the Fool. And the Four of Pentacles. It's very interesting. Oh. Oh, I love this kindness in between the Empress and the Six of Swords. Ooh, that's nice. Friction in between the Ace of Pentacles and the Seven of Swords. Oh. Okay, last one. Boat in between the Three of Pentacles and the Ten of Swords. Very interesting. I have another deck that I usually typically use with these two. So it's like a third deck. I, I consider them a deck family in my opinion. So let's add that one in to these two here. So the other deck I have been using with these two is the Sacred Creators Oracle. This is by Chris Ann. This is also published by Hay House. Uh, the other one that I that I was using, the Modern Nirvana Oracle. This one here, this is actually uh, published by Chronicle Books. Uh, Chron Chronicle Prism, rather, which is an imprint of Chronicle Books. Um, so, yes. So we have them here with the... Oracle at the top, uh, Nirvana at the top, and then the Sacred Creators at the bottom. Ooh, Authentic Expression with the Wheel of Fortune, King of Cups, and Follow Through. Very nice. Yeah, I love this for as an, like an added message. Um, I think it just works well together with the two decks like a theme uh some a message that like reinforces the theme and then like a final thing uh to add to the end resolution in between the moon eight of pentacles and what does your soul say i really like these together i feel like the colors uh complement each other Especially these two decks, they complement each other very much. Perception between the sun, nine of pentacles. Overthinking can spoil the magic. Ooh. That actually goes really well with perception. Okay, let's see. We have the Rose Phoenix, which I have no idea what that one means. Um, actually, let's see. Rose Phoenix. Uh, um, Uh, 
It's about stepping into spiritual completion, apparently. Very interesting. Okay, your soul shines. Oh, I didn't change this one. No. Squaring the circle. Six of wands, three of cups, and your soul shines. Okay, this is going to be the last pairing. So then we have resistance in between Ace of Wands and King of Pentacles and the Sacred Flow of Yes. Very interesting. I really like these three together. Let me know in the comments below what decks you use with the Fifth Spirit Tarot. I would love to know what kind of pairings you've been using with, with the tarot. Um, that way maybe, maybe I can see what else pairs well with this particular deck. But this is the pairings that I've been using with the Fifth Spirit, Fifth Spirit Tarot. But yes, let me know in the comments below what you think and what kind of pairings you've been using. So that was the Fifth Spirit Tarot and Radical Tarot, both by Charlie Claire Burgess. I do thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this tarot deck as well as this book. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below no matter what. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Turn on that bell so you can be notified every time I post a brand new video. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it's greatly appreciated and helps me in the long run. Thanks so much and I hope that you have a great day.